Hey, what's going on guys and gals? Anybody on YouTube looking for some valuable information here just as such as I do myself. Um, today I am going to talk about the 12,000 pound Harbor Freight winch that comes with the cable. The, um, the cheaper of the two winches they sell, well, the, the two 12,000 pound winches they sell anyway. And um, so this is my, basically my um, second video of the channel. I just started it and I plan on providing you the content of making things last which will be in future videos but as far as today um, again I specified that I'm going to talk about the 12,000 pound Harbor Freight winch and um, a little bit about making that last something I encountered and why I had to return it three times yes it is a cheap winch I realize that it's not a Warren it's not a Smittybilt and so on um, for what I do it's great Matt's off-road recovery online they use them full-time basically a full-time job for them and they work great there too so um, without further ado if you want to help out my channel consider subscribing throw me a like um, throw me a comment and I appreciate it so anyway I will turn around and I'll show you what I did to my Harbor Freight winch all right so first off and of course there's other videos online or on YouTube that <clears throat> they go into detail and actually um, swapping over the um, steel cable to the synthetic line I'm not I, I've, already, I've already got it all done so I'm not gonna actually show you in detail but I will explain it's simple enough for anybody that's mechanically inclined and staring at my bumper here don't mind my bubblegum welds because them were actually on a cheap Harbor Freight welder also with no gas at the time so um, believe it or not that little welder that titanium can weld very good that's just a, a horrible looking weld on this and and uh, don't mind it anyway so first off I changed the um, winch cable to synthetic line as, as showed here but I went a little further than everybody else and I wanted to make it safer um, you know there was a recent video I think I don't know if it was fake or real I'm assuming it was real but a guy had an F 250 or something he was pulling somebody out had a like an eight inch extended um receiver trailer hitch ball and hooked a tow rope to it and from my knowledge of what i've heard and seen it broke off and the receiver ball went projectile through the windshield and killed the guy which is you know it's, it's a wicked it's an awful tragedy it could have been prevented and that's the that's the worst thing so not only did i like again said i um changed it over to synthetic line but I I got rid of the metal hook and I put a soft shackle on here I also got rid of the the metal brace that um, is supposed to protect the uh, the line from the metal hook so I cut that off being very careful not to tear the fibers so now uh, you know it's not that I don't recommend you still use a um, you know a blanket or something to um, dampen you know if this were to snap so that it would dampen the uh, the tension under the rope but with the soft shackle, if it did go winging through the air and it whacks somebody in the head, it might give them a headache. I don't think it's going to knock them out. It's not going to kill them. So, you know, that's the best thing as far as that goes. So, with that being said, again, um, I took the roller fair lead off there and I switched to the aluminum one. So, I shed some weight. That also improves the winch, um, improves looks. It does come silver or anodized aluminum. And I painted it black. I just didn't want it sticking out like a sore thumb. It's just the way my personal preference was. Um, and here we've got in the box. I've still got a couple things. I've got the roller fair lead. It's brand new. They say you can use it with synthetic line if it hasn't been used with steel line. So your choice if you want to buy that aluminum fair lead or if you want to leave these big honking things on the front of your truck that weigh more. That's all you know. Totally up to you. It also has a couple of rollers. I've got one here and a couple of uh, brackets to go with it and some springs. I took them off the winch and um, they would, uh, they'd actually put the cable under tension so it would kind of wind it into place and it wouldn't tangle. It didn't work that great anyway. Um, so I did take that off there. I'll zoom in here and kind of show you what it looks like. And if you are a Tacoma enthusiast watching and you are trying to put it in a DB8 front <laughs> off-road bumper, it barely fits and taking that tape that cable tensioner off there makes a world of a difference as you can see it's it's just above the um the grill mount there and i believe i did bend a piece of that to make that fit a little bit um and the trans cooler if you have the towing package in this specific truck is also you know real close to it but <clears throat> that did um 
it did solve that problem taking that off there and giving you the extra clearance so that was my um that was my encounter with that and making it safer and um it also you know it's just easier to work with and synthetic line is i mean it's like it's like patting a cat it's so smooth you know i mean i don't know how else to describe it it's like animal hair you know it's great so if you are going to take your cable, you basically pull the cable all the way out and um, you'll get to the drum and then there's also going to be the, um, there's a drum screw in there and the cable, you just unscrew the screw and again, there's other videos on there, you unscrew the screw, you take the cable out and the only thing you have to do with the synthetic line, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> is you have to... Um, you got to cut a few fibers off, and some people wrap, wrapped electrical tape off it to put it back in the drum because it's not actually specifically designed for it. Or, like what I did, I had actually um, used some heavy gauge um, wire um, heat shrink tube. So that's how I did it. Stuck it back in the drum, put the set screw in there, and of course, you know, spun the cable and wound it on there, and you're good to go. And I believe there's like an extra 25 feet too if you do switch the cable. It's lighter, safer, and you can you can still wear gloves as a safety um, precaution. You know, it can burn your hands if you go across it quick, but it's not going to be sharp. So, the next thing I did encounter with this winch, and yes, it's Harbor Freight. I did return it three times. So, what you're looking at here is the Badland box, as stated and shown on the picture. That mounts on top of the winch. That beautiful baby, you know. So, that beautiful baby's great when it's sitting upright. But, there is no watertight seal on this thing. So maybe if you bought a Smitty, a Warren, some kind of expensive brand, there would be a watertight seal. There's nothing on your wires that go inside this thing. Nothing whatsoever. That's great. It works fine when it's sitting up straight. It may still get water in it, but mine was not. Mine was... Put together if i can get it back together here and mine was you know it was sitting inside the bumper on this tacoma so it was sitting either this way or that way inside the bumper and the first two winches okay the, one of them clicked and one of them did nothing and it was within a year's time so i'm like what the heck's going on here i know they're cheap but you know there's professional people that use these and they really work well so I took this box, I tipped it up, I took it out, got ready to bring it back to the store. And of course, what comes out of the box? Rusty water. <laughs> so that box houses your, um, your solenoid. And when your solenoid's in that box and it's tilted the wrong way, it's just not gonna work out. It's gonna fill with water. So if that helps anybody before you install a winch, I'm sure you'll be happy to know that. As for my Tacoma right here, um, the DB8 front bumper. The I'll try to show you. It's just a cell phone camera. It's nothing really expensive. Um, there's a solenoid. So there it is inside the bumper. And yes, I had to take a couple wires off, a ground off, and do a few things. If you get a little bit of mechanical knowledge, you can you can do it for sure. Um, there's the couple screws I mounted it. So yes, this thing can get water. And, but, I mean, it's still behind the bumper, but yes, water can get in there from wind blowing and stuff like that. And yes, snow can blow in there and such, but the solenoid is not going to be sitting in a pool of water. It is actually going to be, even if it does get wet, it's going to dry with the air, you know, the airflow into the front of the bumper. So if you do get the Harbor Freight winch and you want to save yourself a little bit of a headache, even if you did buy the extra warranty, mount that solenoid externally out of that box because i'm telling you right now it's going to help you um if you are a tacoma owner and you got a cheap dv8 bumper as i've got you got this funny looking piece of rubber and that's like right here make it last engineering <laughs> self tapping screws painted black i think i bought this stuff it was like um a running um like a, a footboard rubber mat for your house and home depot <laughs> something like that but it's going to prevent snow from falling down inside this bumper and getting inside where that winch is also. So there you go. There's a little bit of a DIY for you guys that are going to put the Harbor Freight bumper in. 
in anything, you know, a Tacoma um, or any four-wheel drive vehicle at that matter. Um, so, hope this helps you out. It wasn't too boring. And, again, consider subscribing so I can maybe make some money down the road if I get lucky enough. And I'll provide more content if you want to comment. And let me hear what you want. Here's a little bit of my wiring that I did on this truck. Um, oh, and speaking of that, <laughs> I wasn't even thinking about this. So I leave this disconnected for the winch. They are bulky. They're ugly. And I have the um, conversion for the um, remote controlled um, winch uh, controller. Because I've got the other one sitting in the box here that's wired. And who the heck wants to deal with that thing when you can stand a lot further away and watch what you're doing and maybe stand out of the mud or, or wherever you are. So I leave this disconnected as a safety precaution. I've got it zip tied. It can't touch the positive terminal. If for some reason when that remote's floating around in my center console with the junk I have in there, it decides that the, um, the bumper wants to get stuck or the button wants to get stuck and, um, you know, cause this thing to short and overheat. So I just, I just leave it there. And these are my other um, accessories and things on this Tacoma and um, my, my battery and my fuse block that I put on there and maybe some things to add later on. But again, um, thanks for watching and I really hope this helps you out.